I am so excited because I have the embalmstress herself, Miss Cold Hands host, Monica Torres, as a guest for this bonus podcast episode for the month of July. Monica, how are you doing? I'm doing so well. And thank you so much for having me. It's so fun and such an honor to be able to engage with you and um, all of your listeners. Thank you for being here, Monica. I have to tell you that like, ever since I found out about you, I've kind of had, I don't want to say like a girl crush, but almost a girl crush on you because I think that you're just, you're amazing. I love what you're doing with your courses and I love just your, your positive energy and your dedication to death care. So I know so much about you. Why don't you introduce yourself to the listeners? Okay. And I I have to say, I feel the same way about you. I'm just super, um, (laughs) I'm just super excited to be talking with you today because, um, I do follow you as well and I'm following everything that you're doing. I feel like we're just in, you know, leading this movement right now, um, and opening up the, this death care space for other women that are, you know, minorities and, um, may be having struggles trying to get into the field. So it's, it's really important to me to be able to engage with you. And I appreciate you. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Monica Torres. I am a licensed funeral director and I'm a licensed embalmer. I specialize in postmortem reconstructive surgery, and I do offer educational courses for embalmers and the public online. It's a passion of mine to be able to share all of the knowledge that, that I have. I've been really fortunate in my career to learn from the very best embalmers, um, I would say in the world. And I'm just trying to share that knowledge and pass that on to other women and um, people that want to engage in this type of, you know, curiosity that is our natural world, I guess, for you and I. (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's so interesting to me. And I almost forget sometimes that the general public doesn't really have the information that we have about caring for the deceased and what goes on behind the scenes, because so much of what they learn is through television, movies, books, and just some inaccurate information. Now, the title of this, the name of this podcast is Death at the Movies. So I would be remiss not to ask, what is your favorite death care movie or movie that talks about death care and grief? It could be a movie, it could be a show, it could be a book, any form of what is your absolute favorite? And, and particularly as it relates to our topic today, which is pet death. Sure, sure. I would have to say that it's a childhood a book that I read as a child, and it's called Where the Red Fern Grows. And I remember reading that book as a child. I, I was always a person who loved animals since I was very little. My best friends were animals when I was little. My best friends are still animals and as an adult. And I remember reading that book over and over and over again and, you know, feeling the grief that the little boy felt, you know, when his dog died and um, understanding even at a young age, all of the symbolism with the red fern. So if, if anybody is listening and for whatever reason, you have not ever had the opportunity to read that book where the red fern grows, I highly recommend you read it or you read it to your children. Um, it will, it will bring you to tears (laughs) for sure, but it's, it's a, it's a good teary, you know, it's a good, a good, sad. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I can remember reading the book when I was younger, but I have to honestly say that I don't remember the story yeah well it's it's about this little boy who um wants nothing more in life than to have a blue tick hound and he grows up in the um I believe in the um the Catskills or something like that somewhere in the mountains and he saves all his pennies and buys himself a dog and he actually ends up getting two dogs and um, as a child, when I was reading this book, I was like, oh my gosh, like I can have my own dogs, you know, and I don't have to just get one. Like I can have two, as you know, I have two now. <laughs> so it was right. really, yeah, it, it impacted, um, it was, it had a huge impact on me as far as like my love for animals. And 
Um, it also helped me to understand as a child that, you know, we, we get, we end up, you know, becoming pet parents and it is just like that. It's not just about getting the dog or the cat and, um, you know, sharing time with them, but you build this incredible relationship. And in many instances, an incredibly strong bond that's even stronger than human relationships sometimes. So that's been my experience in life. And um, that book really did kind of prepare me for the grief and shadow loss that I felt after I lost my beloved service dog clubber as an adult. So it's, it's a pretty good book. Wow. I'm definitely going to revisit that. Um, my favorite. Uh, death and there's a movie too. So you can watch. Is the there? Movie. Yeah. Is you there? can watch the movie. Awesome. Awesome. Um, my favorite pet loss story is all dogs go to heaven. And Love it. I remember Love it. being so, I think that was where I was introduced to the concept of murder. Like someone could actually do something that could kill someone else or in this situation yeah an animal could do something that could kill another animal but yes. it's such a great movie um it's one of my favorites of mine. And yeah I mean, one of my I'm favorites amazing. by far absolutely yes so yeah so you mentioned being a dog mommy and I'm also a dog mommy I have my baby love who is a chihuahua yorkie mix and I've had for her for going on nine years. And when I think back to other pets that I've had in the past, she is definitely the one that I've had the most intense and just authentic connection with. And I know that you have two Dobermans, correct? I do. I do have two Dobermans. I have, I've had four throughout my life, uh, my adult life. And I do have to say, you know, so, uh, good friend, a dog trainer and breeder told me a long time ago, um, when she had met me and I had my dog clubber, who's also a Doberman. And she told me, she said, you know, you have such a good dog. And she said, you, you and that dog are so in tune with each other and you're so, um, your souls are connected. And she said, you know, you're really lucky because you, if you're lucky in this life, you get one dog like that you get one dog or one, one cat like that in your life. And, um, she said some people never experienced that. And at the time it didn't really sink in, but after I went through that loss of losing my mm -hmm. beloved Doberman clubber Lang, uh, I realized how special he was to me and I've had three Doberman since. And however, I love them all dearly there. None of them it wasn't the same kind of relationship or love. Um, right. But I do have cash and fancy now who are like my um, little clowns that run around here. And <laughs> I love both. seeing them on social media. Like I <laughs> love it when they're in the pool and they're chilling. Yeah. Poolside. I'm like, okay, yes. <laughs> they, fu they, are, they fulfill my life. They really do. I don't have children, um, but I do have, you know, the four legged, the four legged type. So yeah, they're, super cute. So as a death care professional, the relationship with my dog is just, I, I can't explain it. I, she's not a rescue dog, but I told everybody that she rescued me. I got her the day before I graduated mortuary school. And she's been basically a non-trained therapy dog for me. If I have a bad day, I come home and if I have to cry, she'll sit down and cry with me. She'll you know, I, she knows how to like pray. <laughs> like, oh. I get on my knees to say my prayers. She'll come cuddle up next to me and put her head down. You know, we eat together. We sleep together. We just do everything together. And like you, I don't have children. And I can't imagine what my life would be like without her. However, that is such a big reality for so many people. And you created an amazing resource um, that I'd love for you to share with the listeners um, that's actually coming up on the 22nd of this month. And I'm pretty sure you'll be hosting it again in the future, but would you like to share a little bit about your death of a pet, how to prepare the body for viewing um, with Cole and Peary? Yeah, I would. I would love to um, this. And this, this segment couldn't have come at a 
more perfect time. It was coincidental that you reached out to me and said, Hey, I want to talk about pet death. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is so perfect because I have this class coming up and this class is so special on so many levels. It's um, I'm really stepping out of my comfort zone with this class. And um, I would say out of all the classes that I've created and that I've taught, this one is the most personal to me because it's really based off of um, a very, very personal experience that I went through mm -hmm. alone. And mm -hmm. so I felt this um, innate, I guess, uh, pull to create this, this class. And um, the lady that is going to be co-presenting this class with me is one of my uh, she's a colleague, but she's also one of my clients who reached out to me about a year ago during the pandemic when her beloved pet was going through the final stages of life and was pretty much like on, on doggy hospice at the time. And she reached out to me um, through my consulting business online, through my website and said, hey, you know, we have a unique request. Um, we have a pet and we really need your help on how to prepare the body. And of course, you know, I said, absolutely. And, um, I worked with Cole and Victor, her husband to basically talk them through how to prepare Ruby, her little body once she had expired and the home funeral that these two put together for this beloved little beagle was extraordinary. And after seeing everything that she did, I said, you know, with your experience, because for those of you who don't know Cole and Peary, she's a, she's known around the world for her work, um, her pioneering work in thanabotany and death work. She's basically set the ground rules for death companioning um, pretty much all over the world with, and her studies have been, um, her development studies are through shadow loss and shadow light and dreaming. So if you guys don't know what that is, you might want to look her up online because she's fascinating. And, um, the course is a two part segment. The first part is going to be myself teaching the technical aspect of preparing the body. And the second part is going to be Cole talking about the social aspect and the emotional, um, portion of that preparation. And, you know, basically like, you know, like you said, I don't know if I could do it for my dog. She's going to talk about that as well. Like, how do you know? And, and who do you call if you don't, if you can't do it? And we're both going to share our personal experiences, mine with Clubber and hers with Ruby, as far as the, from, you know, beginning to end and how things went and how we felt after and, and the grief process and how um, different it is than losing a human partner or loved one. So we're looking forward to it. We've been working really hard on this class. And like I said, it's been emotional for both of us because she just lost Ruby last year. And, um, I'm barely, it's been about six years since I lost Clubber. And however, he did a, live a very long and full life and he died very valiant, valiantly. He had a warrior's death. And, um, but it still is really hard for me to talk about. As a matter of fact, I'm getting teary thinking about it right now because I miss him so much. I but, can um, hear it in your voice and I felt your energy change when you were. Yeah, it's, it's still, you know, really hard to talk about because he was so, um, he was my best friend. He was my best friend. He was my protector. Um, he was a, a service dog. I mean, he traveled everywhere with me. He went on 14 national flights with me. He was a very experienced traveler and he had been on subways. He'd been to aquariums and he is a, his obituary is pretty lengthy because he was so involved. My dog did work at the VA here in Phoenix before his death. Um, when he was retired out of service work, um, he would still go to the VA and with my uncle, who was a veteran, who's also retired. And he had tons of human friends, dog friends, animal friends, human friends though, too. <laughs> so luckily I, I didn't hoard his, you know, um, special little 
spirit all to myself, but it, there has been a void since he's been gone. And I can imagine, um, that Cole is experiencing the same thing right now by losing Ruby. So we're, we're looking forward to it. We've got, um, we've got a handful of people already signed up and we haven't even really marketed the class yet. I think we have like five or six people already signed up. So, um, we're hoping to fill the class and give people an opportunity to like, just understand that there is another way, like you don't have to go to the vet and like have your dog or cat cremated or your bird or your guinea pig or your worm or whatever, you know what I mean? Like there's options. And, um, by taking the class, you're going to learn how to prepare the body, um, or, or get help and know that there's people that can help you and also be prepared emotionally for it as much as possible. All of that is so vital and so important. And particularly right now, I'm pretty sure like Cole, many people have lost their pets during the pandemic. And I don't know about anyone else, but my dog and I seem to have like bonded on another level during the pandemic. Oh, I'm sure. We spent so much time together. And yeah. so I think yeah. the grief is twofold because a lot of people are having to go back to work, which means that their pets are now at home alone after right. having almost a year, if not more, of being involved and intimately close on a daily basis. So I think that what you and Cole are doing is so amazing. Can you tell everyone where to find out more about you, the other courses you offer, and how to register for this course on the 22nd of July? Oh yeah. I guess that's important, right? People need to know how to register. So gotta know. <laughs> yeah. We need, we need to know how to register for the class. So you all are welcome. I'll please visit my website. You can easily find my website through my Instagram. It's, I have a link tree in my link in bio on my Instagram at cold hands hosts. And whenever you want to go there and check to see what classes or see what's in the store that we have online, anything pertaining to next generation more choice support, you can go there and you can click on the courses and events link and you can actually register right there, right on my Instagram. But I want to let all your listeners know a secret. Okay. We like secrets. Yes. So all of the grave woman followers and listeners are going to know this special secret. Every two weeks, in the year of 2021, we are hosting a class. Um, so in my story on Instagram, every two weeks, you will see me advertising the new class that's coming up. If you pay attention and follow the story in my Instagram, you will get discount codes because every once in a while, cash comes over to me and says, hey, mom, give them a discount <laughs> code. Yes, yes. Speak for yeah. the people. <laughs> yeah. So you'll see cash will come over and he says discount code day. And then that's when I know to post cash's discount for the classes. And it's, it's all year. I do that pretty much for all the classes. Um, I don't make it super public. It's the people that are really, truly following the story and um, on my Instagram, but um, I will put those discounts in there. So maybe you guys should. Uh, check out the story on my Instagram or my Facebook. I think that you guys should definitely check out the story. I've attended one of your classes, the class that you did about embalming COVID cases. Yes. And I can speak from personal experience and say that your classes are absolute, or your, that class was absolutely amazing. Um, and I took away so much, even after working in death care for 12 years, I took away so much Good. from your course. So please, please, please register. And even if this isn't a class that is for you, maybe you can gift it to the dog mommy or the dog daddy or the dog yes. family or the pet family in your life. Because we all know someone like Monica and myself who don't necessarily have children, but they have fur babies or reptile babies or whatever type of animal baby that they have. And this would be an amazing gift because unfortunately, you know, our animals aren't designed to live forever, ever, just like we aren't designed to live forever. Monica, I have absolutely loved speaking with you. I look forward to our collaboration in the future. And I, I just can't say thank you enough for taking the time out to talk to the listeners here for this bonus pod, podcast episode. 
Well, absolutely. I always love our time together. I wish that we had more time to chit chat together and I wish we live in the same city, but unfortunately this is like the only way that we get to like spend time together, but it's still great because we get to share it with everyone who's listening too. And, um, the one thing, one thing I forgot to mention is that for those of you who may be interested in the class that are professionals, this class is accredited. Um, so if you want to take this class for professional development, you can, and you'll get credit for CEUs. If you're a family member and you're not necessarily a mortician, but you just want to learn how to have a home funeral for your pet or your child or guide your child through it, you can take it too. So it, this is a class that's for everyone, old, young, um, all ages, everyone's invited to take this class. I have a question, Monica. Um, let's say a family wants to take the class. Do they each need to register or is it just one registration per family or per person? Yeah, that's really, that's a really good question. Um, you know, I would say probably if it's a family that's potentially going to be losing their pet, I would probably recommend that the family take it together in a private session with Cole and I, um, I think that might be a little, a little bit better. They could probably get their questions answered a little better. Right. Um, but if it's just a one person, I would say, take the group experience. If you are going to be expecting a loss, if you're in that process, if your cat, if your kitty, your doggy, your pony, or whoever is in that process of the dying process, schedule a one-on-one -on -one with Cole and I, and you can do that right in the same section on my website. You just scroll all the way to the bottom and it says private classes. I think that would probably be more appropriate for a family, especially if there's children involved. Okay. Awesome. Monica. Great question. Well, thank, thank you so much again for joining me. You guys have all the information. Make sure that you're following Monica on all social media platforms and also subscribe to her YouTube channel. She has a YouTube channel and visit her website. I'll make sure that all of that information is in the description attached to this podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening. Live life, love hard, and we'll talk to you next time. Talk to you next time, Joel. Take care.